Where did that factory get off to? Did I lose it? Oh yeah, it's just floating around doing some scouting. Moro known to do that quite a bit. Very unusual that he's just completely abandoned his siege tanks that have served him so well over the last few weeks, winning him, you know, a lot of cash and a lot of tournaments and a lot of prestige. But no siege tanks today. No siege tanks for game one, and um, once again, kind of spreading out his for forces, trying to get the concave. The factory will will be the early warning signal that uh, the forces are on the way. Uh, Moro will be able to see the three colossus that were kind of poking out there on, uh, in front, belying uh, uh, Huck's force, and uh, second expansion going up now for Moro. Going to try to press his economic advantage. Uh, uh, Huck once again not falling for the bait. Uh, oh, moving back to defend this drop. I didn't even notice that drop. Uh, Moro just dropped four, four marauders into Huck's main. Um, didn't really get much done. I'm not sure exactly what they destroyed. Did you happen to notice that, Jadius? No, I'm sorry for the viewers at home. I also missed it. Looked like they they kind of knocked this pylon around a bit, but without actually killing it. Maybe more of a, a psych out tactic there for Moro because you know it wasn't a significant force. Uh, Medivax and. Um, and Vikings out in the field, more Vikings on the way. I don't, I don't think there's enough Vikings to to handle this, but uh, the stim pack is going to do its job well. Going to be able to kind of skirt these force fields and get a good, good concave um, on the Protoss forces. And Huck is going to come out of this way behind. Yeah, absolutely. These uh, Vikings did make a difference, and uh, of course, Medivax doing a great job of healing. Um, very important unit for Terrans to have in their army. Uh, Moro just didn't have any of it last game. Yeah, and I mean, I'm just really, really glad that he's finally smartened up, got those starport units out, and now we're going to do. We're now we're going to see a significant drop, a, a drop that ac can actually do some damage. And uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm eager to see how Huck can handle this. Huck, the unbeatable one, looks very beatable right now. Yeah, a bunch of reinforcements coming from the east um, to tr attempt to push away this attack. Moro will not concede yet. If he chooses to run, he'll be able to hop into those medevacs and escape, but he's still staying on the ground. He's still engaging this army, which now includes a bunch of probes. Now Moro is choosing to escape. Now Moro sneaking in a pretty significant force also through the to, through to the main door. Probably gonna gonna stay around with those medevacs, keep them ready to kind of just bounce his forces forces back to front, back to front, and uh, really put Huck in a in a in a pretty pretty hard position to deal with this ping ponging of your main force. But uh, but Moro actually opting not to do the drop now that the base is completely uh, completely abandoned. I I totally don't agree with this. I thought it was his strategy to do so, but uh, he didn't do it. Yeah, well, I think he was just trying to keep his macro up to snuff, and I don't think he was able to do all those things at once. Um, just moving back and reinforcing his army, just getting everyone in, in position, healing everybody up, and making sure to continue building more units. Moro now putting down four, five, six additional barracks in this second expansion, and this is going to hugely increase his ability to quickly create ground army. It looks like we're dealing with Moro the Terran Zerg right now, <laughs> and his his uh, units just being bolstered at at an alarming rate. And um, looks like we will see some DTs out here for Huck, which is a very very good strategy for a Protoss who is kind of behind the eight ball. And uh, looks like the DT is actually already going to work on Moro's third expansion. Moro going to catch wind of that and uh, hopefully go and take care of it with a scan. But a DT now heading for the second expansion, and, and, Mor and Moro's going to have to handle this pretty fast. Let's see if some uh, some ravens come out on the field. Will the starport be converted anytime soon? Yeah, it looks like Moro's planning to handle this by simply ending the game. Um, he's going to do another massive, massive drop of his entire army into Huck's main base, and also do a quick preliminary scan to prevent any Dark Templar from messing up his plans, but there are none. Huck moving in with lots of stalkers and sentries and a few zealots to back them up, but I think Moro's army is way bigger. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think that this this uh, this Protoss army is going to be able to handle it. A lot of a lot of uh, units warping in here for uh, for Huck, which will extend this battle for a little while. But the sheer amount of Medivacs will mean that the Terran Terran units can stim pack as ad nauseum and just uh, 
whittle the, these uh, these uh, pretty much only sentries down. A couple of stalkers here in the ranks, and a couple more warp ins. But uh, the Terrans will be able to do the job here. And uh, looks like Huck, even though he does have the DT technology, DT is kind of prowling around the map. Uh, may feel like this game is is is, is far uh, too far gone for him. Yeah, absolutely. These medevacs continuing to heal those marauders and marines. Ton more still in production at Morrow's base. Seven marauders, eight marauders now in production. Um, oh, a couple, a couple dark templar coming in here to screw up Morrow's plans. Morrow will run away for a short while until he can get a scan out. Yeah, there's a scan going down. They're gonna, they're gonna farm down this DT. No, they're not actually. DT is gonna survive. Will the DT go down while the scan is still up? Yes, one marauder is gonna take, take it on, take it upon himself to get that DT down as the other marauders run away in vain. That's the bravest marauder you will ever see, and um, looks like Moro's gonna have enough, uh, enough uh, forces to farm down these zealots, who are also very brave in their own right. But still, yeah, Huck's production has dropped to nothing. All he's doing now is researching a psionic storm and creating a couple Dark Templar. Uh, but at this point, he's just trying to extend the game, I think. I don't think there's any way he can win this game. All he can do is annoy Moro and make sure he goes into the next game angry about his Huck's annoying tactics at the end. Well, you know, Huck's still on two bases, actually, now a little a, a small contingent of forces for, for Moro going to start hitting his second expansion, and uh, and Huck is going to say, yeah, enough is enough, I can't handle a two-pronged attack. I've got, you know, no photon uh, towers, no no units to speak of, so, uh, so Huck is going to concede, and like you said, go into game three nice and mad and ready to go, and nice and ready to put Moro back off his game now that he's reclaimed his game. But uh, still, you know, it's still really surprising me that Moro is not building a single siege tank. I mean, this yeah, the, this, this strategy is working, but it I think it worked because Huck did the exact same thing that he did in, in game one, and Moro built the units to counter those colossi. But what will what will Huck come out with in game three now that he's seen that that's not going to work? And will Moro build the same thing? You know, w will it be a bounce back and forth where one t one strategy works, so someone changes their strategy and the other person doesn't? We'll have to see. But game two goes to uh, to Moro. I think very well played on his part. Yeah, absolutely. I like the integration of those Vikings and Medivacs. Uh, it was very important. It was totally missing in the first game. And you know, uh, the Medivac or the Vikings did their job. They actually stopped Huck from making Colossi um, because. Vikings destroy Colossi so easily it'll often stop a Protoss from even making them at all. And that was that allowed Moro to really press his advantage and and really become more powerful throughout the game. Yeah, absolutely. And if you can get those few minutes in a game where the player is like, Okay, well I can't use Colossus anymore, what do I do? What do I build? They build a Dark Templar tower or they start building high Templar research and you've got those few minutes where they're kinda of trying to decide while your army is just growing and growing and growing, and um, that's pretty much what happened here with Moro. The Dark Templar came out, but Moro's forces were just too vast, and uh, Huck couldn't handle it at that point. Absolutely. So it was a fun game number two from the Gosu Gamers King of the Hill uh, series, uh, first ever a series, um, best of seven between uh, Huck and Moro. Great rivalry brewing between those two. Series tied 1-1. We we're going to bring you every game in the series, day to day, and uh, on my on behalf of myself, Jadius, Bayus, and the Wood League, we thank you guys for tuning in. Please tune in for the uh, future games, and uh, we'll see you folks next time.